right friends welcome back to learning space this is quick wrap up 15th module in this series 16th and the last module that will be uploaded on 28th september monday with that this series will conclude right friends as usual we are going to discuss 40 statements first one is most important that is open credit enablement network this is not the initiative of national payments corporation of india I would like to tell you three, four statements about it. First one is I Spirit. That is the organization behind it. Second is the man behind this idea is Nandan Nilekani. Third point is on one side lenders like banks and on the other side marketplaces. The idea is to give affordable credit to the bottom of the pyramid, say micro enterprises. That is the idea of open credit enablement network and it is into the news in recent times next one is the monopoly abuse of dominant position and unfair trade practices by digital entities like google that comes under the domain of competition commission of india most of you might have forgotten about that organization competition commission of india that is statutory body and it looks into the abuse, then dominating market position and unfair trade practices. All these are looked after by the statutory body, Competition Commission of India. And recently, Google is quite often into the news for the abuse of its dominant position. And in recent times also, Google is into the news in the context of the Paytm issue, I am not going into those details. National Digital Health Mission, this is proposed to be established as open digital ecosystem. That means digital infrastructure will be established, then proper governing rules will be there and community will be there. That means it is a three layered architecture. That means various players will enter this architecture. And such types of interoperable architectures are known as this open digital ecosystem. That means on one side hospitals and on the other side doctors, patients, all these as well as diagnostics, as well as pharmacies, all will enter this open digital ecosystem and it is three layered architecture so friends this is important from your exam perspective it is interoperable tech platform and such type of platforms are called open digital ecosystems where number of players by following certain rules they will enter into this platform next is as per the recent farming produce trade and commerce bill that means initially it came as ordinance now it is passed by the parliament, most of you are well aware and here for doing trading of agricultural produce, two things I would like to tell you. First one is no license is required. Second is farmers can sell from the farm gate, farmers can sell from the warehouse directly, they need not take it to the Monday. Next point is here any entity having valid pawn could participate in the farm produce trading. The point I would like to tell you is no license is required. Then Red Panda, please correct this statement. Red Panda is in existence towards the eastern Himalayas, not towards western Himalayas. Starting from somewhere around Nepal, Nepal, then Sikkim, northern West Bengal, Bhutan, Arunachal Pradesh, some areas of Myanmar, then China. So this is towards the eastern Himalayas part as far as Red Panda is concerned. So friends, Red Panda, this giant panda, these are different. Giant panda, that belongs to China. That is extant in China only. I am talking about giant panda. Giant panda is vulnerable. And there is a difference between giant panda and red panda. The families are different. Giant panda belongs to some bear family. And the family of red panda is different. Giant panda is vulnerable because of the conservation efforts of China. And this red panda, this is endangered. These are the important aspects. And red panda, 
this is primarily towards eastern himalayas and the availability extends right from nepal right up to china so it is present in countries like nepal bhutan india myanmar china this is i am talking about red panda whereas the giant panda that is available only in china this is the difference giant panda is vulnerable red panda is endangered these are the primary differences then in our country there are no regulatory laws pertaining to the implementation of assisted reproduction technologies ivf technique that is example of assisted reproduction technology there are no laws in our country of course icmr guidelines are there but several ivf firms or other assisted reproduction technology companies as well as the hospitals they are not following the guidelines so therefore under these circumstances government is bringing assisted reproduction technologies bill all of you are well aware then aerosols these are the suspended solid and liquid particles why this is into the news aerosols are into the news because of the reason now there is a presumption or some people believe that covid 19 that is spread through the aerosols in the closed settings and in certain areas where people come in contact with these aerosols covid 19 is being transmitted in this context aerosols are into the news when we talk about aerosols these are the solid and liquid particles they are suspended in the air and they are normally less than 5 microns in size please correct it they are normally less than 5 microns in size next important aspect natural aerosols fog mist dust these are examples of natural aerosols smoke as well as particulate matter particles these are examples of the anthropogenic aerosols right friends access to internet is a fundamental right absolutely wrong in fact there is no such thing as access to internet is a fundamental right in fact courts also not interpreted that way so as on date if you look at the situation in our country access to internet is not a fundamental right of course supreme court interpreted something else in recent times like right to freedom of speech and expression via the medium of internet is covered under the fundamental right such type of statement was given by the supreme court and supreme court has not given any statement directly about access to internet as a fundamental right so this is quite often in the news in recent times friends please keep in mind access to internet is not a fundamental right then bilateral netting agreement enables two counter parties in a financial contract to offset the claims against each other and for banks it requires lesser capital in the financial operations absolutely right statement friends recently the parliament passed this bilateral netting financial services bill but this word was there for several months so you can expect a question in the preliminary examination what is this bilateral netting that means it considers offsetting the claims that means i am a party let me be party a let us consider i as the party a you are party b i gave you 100 rupees please listen carefully i gave you 100 rupees so here the contractual transaction between us is 100 rupees and in some other contract you gave me 60 rupees so through some other contract you gave me 60 rupees so friends the liability is part if you see 100 minus 60 so the liability comes to 40 rupees if you look at individual contracts your liability for me is 100 rupees my liability to you is 60 rupees but 
financial netting or bilateral netting bilateral netting looks at the net liabilities net assets like that so therefore the net liability between both of us is 100 minus 60 that is 40 rupees so friends i took simple example i gave you 100 rupees in one contract that is one contract between both of us you gave me 60 rupees that is another contract between both of us but the net liability between both of us is 100 minus 60 that is rupees 40 so this is offsetting the financial claims so such type of thing is allowed through bilateral netting because of that what happens banks require lesser capital for expanding the operations so it will facilitate banks expansion of the operations i hope you got clarity so banks require lesser capital for expanding the financial operations so friends this is into the news please keep in mind bilateral netting between the two counterparties in a financial contract they will offset claims against each other because of that the liabilities they are adjusted and that is known as net claims this is bilateral netting then due to the uncertainties in the context of covid 19 individuals will try to save more and this is known as paradox of thrift this word is into the news normally in the types of recession what is to be done in the times of recession people have to spend more but in the times of uncertainties like covid 19 fears will be there in the minds of the people people will fear for what is my future that's why people will try to save more this is known as paradox of thrift so friends paradox of thrift some people say when people are saving more that enters the banks and subsequently banks can lend at lesser interest rates that is different theory i am not going into those details but in the situation arising out of covid 19 under these circumstances individuals they will try to save more because now the economy is not growing well under these circumstances the normal intuition such as one has to spend more but if you look at the individuals they don't spend more they try to save more because of the uncertainties and this situation is known as paradox of thrift this is into the news in the context of covid 19 friends this bilateral netting paradox of thrift these are into the news in recent times then as per the 20th livestock census which were held in 2019 we deliberated in detail in the previous classes i am not going into those things like goat the sheep buffaloes cattle we already deliberated in detail then one point i missed at that point of time that is backyard poultry in recent times what happened is backyard poultry that increased by around 46 percent and the commercial poultry increased by around four to five percent overall poultry increased by around 16 to 17 percent these the statistics do not forget backyard poultry that increased enormously at 46 percent then commercial poultry increased by around four to five percent and overall poultry increased by around 16 17 percent something like that please correct this statement look at the next one india imposes digital services tax friends two things please don't forget in 2016 india started very important point in 2016 india started equalization levy on the advertising agencies suppose advertising agency is a non-resident say for example google advertising agency like google facebook when they are non-resident on such entities if a company is giving advertisements it is not applicable for individuals it is applicable for companies suppose a company based in our country is giving advertisements through google facebook then equalization levy is six percent 
that is one aspect this is quite old but recently government brought similar type of tax that is digital services tax digital services tax is the tax imposed on non resident e commerce operators non resident e commerce operators means for example amazon then this walmart controlled flipkart also that also becomes non resident e commerce company so when they are selling goods or services on the revenue generated there is a 2% please correct this statement i have already told you on advertisement revenue that was imposed in 2016 that was equalization levy that was 6% and this is different this is the digital services tax on the non resident e commerce operators very important non resident e commerce operators if you are purchasing through the domestic entity like geomart or any other organization which is based in our country this digital services tax is not applicable it is applicable on non resident e commerce operators like amazon and it is 2% of the revenue they generate in india from e commerce supply or services it is applicable on all services as well as goods that is the important aspect then the digital services tax that is to be deposited by the company not by the buyer right most important one the company has to pay it is not to be paid by the buyer like you and me this is another important aspect then all the hydro power projects very important aspect all the hydro power projects irrespective of their capacity in fact in 2019 march or so government brought this all the hydro power companies irrespective of their capacity because prior to that up to 25 megawatt small hydro and beyond that large hydro and this classification has gone away now and with the revised classification all the hydro power projects irrespective of their capacity are considered as renewable projects very very important aspect and they are eligible for various incentives like financial assistance and cheaper credit they are all considered as renewable projects all the hydro power projects are considered as renewable projects and as per this classification the total renewable power capacity in our country comes to around 35% or so but as per the world classification the renewable power capacity in our country comes to around 23% or so but in spite of this circular almost all the news reports are going by the previous one so therefore even now also whenever you look at any newspaper article you find up to 25 megawatt only are included in the category of this renewable projects and accordingly various statistics are being given in the newspapers but if you strictly go by the government regulations all the hydro power projects irrespective of their capacity are considered as renewable projects and they are eligible for the incentives like financial assistance and cheaper credit and if you go by this then around 35% of the entire installed capacity in our country that comes under renewable then at present in india the irrigated area by canals is higher than the irrigated area through the tube wells is absolutely wrong at the time of independence please listen carefully at the time of independence the irrigated area by the canals is higher but subsequently what happened the irrigated area under tube wells that increased substantially so friends now across the country out of the total irrigated area now tube well irrigation that has the highest component then second highest is canal irrigation this change after independence students should keep in mind right this is one aspect and second aspect is during the past one or two decades the gap is widening between the irrigation potential created and irrigation potential actually benefiting the farmers 
or you can say there is a gap which is widening in recent times between irrigation capacity or irrigation potential created and irrigation potential actually benefiting the farmers that gap is widening that is another point right friends now more than 50 percent of agriculture in our country is rain fed and irrigated area with protected irrigation of tube wells, canals, tanks that is hovering between 40% to 50% of the total cultivated area in our country. This is also another point one should not miss. India-China boundary that is entirely demarcated through McMahon line absolutely wrong. Friends, if you look at the eastern side that is McMahon line if you look at the western side, that is Johnson line and for Sikkim, it is entirely different. It is based on some watersheds. So friends, this students must have clarity. Second is most of the boundary between India and China that is not demarcated on the ground towards eastern side, McMahon line, towards western side, Johnson line and this Johnson line pertains to 1865, McMahon line 1914 and if you look at the Sikkim, the boundary when one looks at Sikkim area, it pertains to somewhere around 1910 or so, right. The proposed eel port, this is situated in Somalia. Why this is into the news? This is into the news because China is going to construct this port. When I talk about Kenya, Mopa support, please don't forget, then this eel port this is in Somalia, right? Hambantota, Sri Lanka, Gwadar, Pakistan, Kakpu, Myanmar. All these things are into the news, right? And Agalega Islands, these are situated in Indian Ocean and these belongs to Mauritius, right? So Agalega Island is into the news because India is developing some facilities. Accordingly, Sabang port, that is of Indonesia that is adjacent to this Sumatra island that belongs to Indonesia and India is developing port facilities in Sabang port that is another important area. Shahid Behasti port or Chabahar port you can say that is situated in Iran and if you look at Iran another port is Bandar Abbas port because it is associated with INSTC. When I talk about INSTC Prominently which comes to my mind is Cash PNC. INSTC passes through Cash PNC. When I talk about Cash PNC, Baku is one important area or you can say Baku is the port city you can say that pertains to Azerbaijan. Right friends, then out of around rupees 21 lakh crore COVID-19 Atmanirbhar Bharat package. Certain things I would like to tell you. This Atmanirbhar Bharat package out of around rupees 21 lakh crore that means around 10% of GDP in the perspective of GDP this Atmanirbhar Bharat package announced by the government is around 10% of GDP and second point is out of this liquidity infusion by Reserve Bank of India that amounts to rupees 8 lakh crore this is one point and if you look at other specifics as per various news reports, out of this rupees 21 lakh crores proposed by the government, rupees 1 lakh crore, please listen carefully, rupees 1 lakh crore, that is part of the budgetary allocation for this year, that is 2021. And additionally, the government has to spend another rupees 2 lakh crore. So from the news reports, you can conclude as far as the direct stimulus is concerned, in the context of COVID-19, the government is giving direct stimulus of around 1% of GDP because the government expenditure in addition to what is there in the union budget, in addition to, that is coming around rupees 2 lakh crore or you can say around 1% of GDP, that is the direct stimulus. In comparison to several emerging economies, in comparison to advanced countries, 
this direct stimulus given by India in the context of COVID-19 is much less. Second point is Indian economy in one particular quarter that is COVID-19 quarter that contracted by 23.9% it is one of the highest and it is the highest among its peers you can say. Then foreign direct investment in defense manufacturing. In fact, under Atmanirbhar Bharat package, the government increased foreign direct investment in defense manufacturing to 74% under automatic route. Of course, recently India imposed certain restrictions like security clearances. That is different story. But this FDI in defense manufacturing that is increased to 74%. Friends, the chief of defense staff that is created and he is four star officer. We learned all these things previously and there is one new department created in the defense ministry. This is department of military affairs and this is headed by chief of defense staff. So India now have chief of defense staff and it is expected to create more and more theater commands in future. When I talk about theater commands, one example is this Andaman and Nicobar command. So theater commands, culture is there in India, but it is very, very low scale. Operational command is this Andaman and Nicobar command. Of course, one or two functional commands are there. But other than that, now the need is to have more theater commands. Theater commands means all the personnel, whether they belong to army, navy, air force, they will be put under one officer. There will not be any different categories of army, navy, air force headed by their own officers. Such type of silos will be eliminated. Right friends, under Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, government brought several other reforms. In fact, domestic capital procurement that is to be increased like that in the defense sector, government brought several other reforms for initiating insolvency under insolvency and bankruptcy code. Friends, to protect micro small enterprises, what the government has done during this COVID-19 is for initiating insolvency under IBC, the minimum threshold is increased to rupees 1 crore. Previously, it was rupees 1 lakh. But now, subsequent to COVID-19, government increased the threshold to rupees 1 crore, basically to protect the MSMEs. Then, in the identified strategic areas, friends, the government announced as part of Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, the government will exit or the public sector enterprises will be no more in existence in future as far as non-strategic sectors are concerned. What the government said is, in the non-strategic sectors, government will exit from public sector undertakings. But in the strategic sectors, there will be a minimum of one, maximum of four public sector undertakings. This is what the government has said. Please keep in mind for the strategic areas. There will be minimum one, maximum four public sector undertakings. Then unconditional borrowing limits raised for states. So this is absolutely wrong. Unconditional borrowing that is raised from three to three and a half percent of gross state domestic product. But beyond that, there are several conditions attached, certain reforms, electricity reforms, like one ration card, one nation, like that certain reforms are tagged. So therefore, up to 3.5%, this is untied or you can say there are no strings attached. Beyond that, there are conditions. Once they satisfy the conditions, beyond 4.5%, they can borrow up to 5%. Or you can say beyond 4.5%, it is again untied or beyond 3.5%. Certain conditions, four types of reforms are to be incorporated. They facilitate the states to borrow 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, extra something like that. So it is linked with the reforms. Then interest subvention of 2%. As part of Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, interest subvention of 2% is applicable 
for all the mudra category wrong it is applicable for only shishu category loans for 12 months 2% interest subvention for shishu category loans for 12 months please correct this statement look at the next statement as part of atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan government announced viability cap funding what is the meaning of viability cap funding if from private sector is investing something if private sector is establishing some hospital some public health lab under those circumstances the government will facilitate up to 30% of the viability gap funding because in the remote areas in the uncovered districts in the remote areas if the private sector is establishing hospital then they may not get return from the investment under those circumstances government will help that is viability gap funding and that is now increased to 30% please correct this look at the next one styrene that is in the context of visakhapatnam incident styrene gas is into the news and in this context i would like to tell you styrene is to be mixed with tertiary butyl catechol or tbc to prevent self polymerization this is absolutely correct in fact what happened in visakhapatnam is styrene that was supposed to be mixed with this tbc to prevent self polymerization but this was not done during covid 19 and accordingly the gas leak occurred this is what happened in andhra pradesh and styrene that is probable carcinogen this is another point then when such type of incidents takes place the government or you can say as per supreme court directive absolute liability principle is there that means whether it is due to negligence or not whether it is due to act of god or not whether it is due to the circumstances beyond their control or not it doesn't matter they have to pay compensation so that is in fact absolute liability principle so friends this strict liability principle that is no more in vogue in our country and what is in vogue in our country is this absolute liability principle please correct this statement whether it is due to negligence or not whether it is due to beyond the circumstances or not when such things happens then absolute liability principle comes into picture they have to pay compensation must be paid then transfer of credits for higher education through swayam platform or allowed please correct this statement under the swayam platform as far as ugc guidelines are concerned transfer of credits when somebody learned through swayam platform then transfer of credits are allowed then sputnik this is the vaccine developed by gamaleya research institute in russia and india's redis laboratories that has a tie up for this vaccine right and please recollect oxford vaccine also but russia announced first this vaccine protective immunity for common cold corona viruses they generally does not last for more than a year absolutely correct the problem with this corona virus or you can say common cold common cold is due to corona viruses there are number of corona viruses so therefore vaccine is not possible for common cold and the immunity or protective immunity because of common cold that may not last more time not more than one year because of that people are affected by common cold quite often and friends this covid 19 that is also because of one type of corona virus it is not clear how much time immunity will be there as far as covid 19 is concerned in this context this protective immunity this comes into picture friends serological tests to know the antibodies we talked about elisa test when we are talking about antibodies igm which are developed first subsequently igg and these antibodies tests they detect both igm as well as igg 
and how far these antibodies last in the body no one knows at this juncture but for the common cold this protective immunity or you can say the antibodies because of common cold they do not last for longer time so because of that reason people are apprehensive with regard to covid 19 not only that when one looks at covid 19 now people are coming to the conclusion that it is going to be spread through aerosol route that is more dangerous and in this context herd immunity we talked about previously because of lack of herd immunity measles is increasing across the globe right friends look at the next one gst network is the fully government owned entity initially this gst network was thought of as government ownership of 49% 24.5% by the center 24.5% by the states put together but later on this is a changed to entire government owned entity because of the simple reason gst involves some sort of strategic information then additional lore this is into the news because here certain samples or you can say these skeletons were found buried in the earthenware urns and they depicted some sort of tamil brown he script and this place additional lore this is in thootukudi district of tamil nadu or chutikore nearer to chutikore and here one important aspect is it came into prominence because of tamil brown he script second important aspect is there was a delay in sending these skeletons for the carbon dating and that created controversy because of all these reasons adi chennellur this is into the news and one more point is adi chennellur is in tamil nadu please correct this statement it is not in kerala and one more point i would like to tell you it is going to be developed as iconic place there are five iconic places which are being developed we learned previously one place rakhi gari in haryana dholavira in gujarat shiv shagar in assam then hastinapur in uttar pradesh adichanallur in tamil nadu this five are important cms please correct it it is not legally binding convention this is cms convention that protects or you can say that has got a two appendices this is cms convention i am talking about uh, because the cop was held in gandhinagar in this context this is cms becomes quite important from your exam perspective site c is legally binding treaty but the cms this is not legally binding it is framework convention below this countries can have legally binding non legally binding treaties so you can call it framework convention then please recollect gibi at the same time the conference was held in gandhinagar and this conserves not only terrestrial migratory as well as aquatic animals so friends avian terrestrial aquatic all are in fact conserved so all three types terrestrial aquatic avian all are conserved as far as cms convention is concerned appendix 1 appendix 2 and in appendix 1 seven types of animals entered appendix 1 this asian elephant that entered appendix 1 similarly great indian bustard whose extant place is now india and pakistan that entered appendix 1 and similarly bengal florican very important bengal florican also entered appendix 1 then if you look at appendix 2 that is uriel uriel belongs to central asia that entered appendix 2 right and then next one there are no biosphere reserves in nagaland manipur mizoram tripura j and k and ladakh absolutely correct jammu and kashmir and ladakh they don't have biosphere reserves then nanda devi in uttarakhand cold desert in himachal pradesh and if you look at northeast four states don't have this biosphere reserves 
starting from nagaland nagaland manipur mizoram tripura these four states don't have biosphere reserves not correct that pertains to garo hills that is in meghalaya then dipru saikova and manas in assam and dihang dibang that is in arunachal pradesh these are in fact the biosphere reserves in northeast of course other one is kanchenjunga in sikkim we learnt in the previous classes right and then let us look at the next one prompt corrective action framework as per this prompt corrective action framework there are mandatory restrictions and at the same time there are other soft restrictions also and these are applicable for both public and private sector banks that means restrictions which will come into picture when banks are not performing well there are three thresholds are there and three parameters are monitored we discussed in the previous classes and it is applicable for both the public and the private sector banks but not applicable for cooperative banks and nbfcs absolutely correct prompt corrective action framework applicable for both the public and private sector banks right friends then three thresholds don't forget and three types of parameters are monitored one is net non performing assets second is capital adequacy ratio and the third one is return on assets these three indicate the functioning of the banks how they are functioning how well they are functioning there is a supervisory action framework applicable for some cooperative banks we taught about previously then repeated frying of cooking oil that results in total polar compounds because of atmospheric oxygen because of moisture because of repeated frying because of all these things what happens is because of polymerization and other processes this total polar compounds are formed and repeated frying results in total polar compounds increase and these are restricted to 25% when i am talking about used cooking oil there is one ruco program ruco program is to convert used cooking oil into biodiesel please do not forget then industrially produced trans fatty acids they are limited to yet present the limit is 5% but by 2022 fssai fixed the limit as 2% right who guidelines says out of your total energy not more than 1% should come from trans fatty acids so trans fats are dangerous for health so therefore it is nothing but through the partial hydrogenation of oils right so oils were made to stay in the solid state that you can conclude in a layman's language and they are tasty at the same time they are amenable for repeated use because of several reasons this trans fatty acids or you can say trans fats they gained momentum across the globe and across the globe they are harming the heart because of that reason the emphasis by who is to cut trans fatty acids at present in india the limit is 5% and by 2022 they have to be reduced to 2% friends eat right india movement which got a global acclaim and world bank recognized it as one of the most important programs from indian perspective this is the initiative of fssai the food regulator right so please correct this statement bats is the second largest mammalian group after rodents and if you look at bats they use echolocation to catch the prey when i am talking about echolocation gangetic river dolphin comes to my mind which also follows echolocation to catch the prey and because of national waterway one this gangetic river dolphin is facing the threats we learned in the previous classes bats they are the reservoir for several viruses because of that reason bats are into the news and bats are there for several thousands of years and because of their evolution long back they became good reservoir for viruses 
so the world is fearing about these viruses which are hosted by several bats or you can say bats are the natural reservoir for various viruses and this is the second largest mammalian group after rodents this is the important aspect to note friends please to join for last module 16th module which we are going to upload on 28th september monday have a nice day thank you